Greetings and gentlemen, this is Kalistophilus and today I thought I'd share with you my overall experience that I've had over the past month whilst using the LG C1 OLED TV as a primary monitor for both work and personal life. In this video I shall cover how smooth the transition has been and some of the quirks that this kind of setup has had for my use case scenario. If you want to know more, then stick around, grab a cup of coffee and consider subscribing for more OLED and gaming related content. Let's begin. So first off, I would like to say that just wow, I'm still kind of in the honeymoon period with this TV where I simply cannot get enough of it. Every game I've tried has looked absolutely mind-blowing when comparing them to what they were on my older VA LCD panel. I have run a few more modern games like Resident Evil 3 and 7, the new Metro Exodus and The Witcher 3 but the majority of my time has actually gone to revisiting older games from the 90s and 2000s which I have already completed. The contrast and the colors of this panel seriously give a new life to older titles which might have looked a bit meh back in the day when I got to experience them on an LCD. With this in mind though, not everything has been just fun and games. And probably one of the biggest issues that I've come across during this time has surprisingly been Linux compatibility. How Linux sees the TV's edit data forces the panel into YCRCB420 color mode. With an NVIDIA GPU, you can manipulate the color space quite easily through the NVIDIA settings app. However, with an AMD GPU, the only way I have discovered this to be possible is via feeding the custom edit to the kernel directly during boot up, which is absolutely insane and doesn't work with my setup for whatever reason. After manipulating the edit data and receiving confirmation from the D message that it is indeed loaded in, the screen still only shows YCRCB420. In addition to incorrect color space, FreeSync is also not recognized to be supported on Linux, whereas on Windows it's perfectly fine. If you have gotten either of those issues resolved somehow, please do let me know in the comments below. But until then, I am very sad and disappointed to say that the Linux experience is pretty abysmal with this TV. Please AMD, get your shit together. You now have really good hardware, but you're still absolutely terrible software-wise with your lack of features on Linux and buggy, halfway supported features on Windows. Would love to remind you of OpenGL support here, but let's not get into the details of AMD software and get back on track with the C1. So now let's talk about some general quirks of using the C1 as a primary display device and how it differs from your regular monitors as there are some technical hurdles which you should be aware of. For instance, I have my work laptop connected to the TV via dock and the hardware is only supporting HDMI 2.0. When I push the TV into 4K resolution, I only get 30Hz output. I can get used to that whilst working, but a side effect of that 30Hz on the C1 OLED panel is that you get raised gamma at these odd refresh rates. This causes screensavers to be, well, not that effective as every single pixel on the screen would still be working and emitting some light. Definitely better than having a static desktop workspace being displayed, but for those non-120Hz desktop situations, I would simply recommend that you lock your screen pretty much every time you leave the computer, as the timeout from lock screen to display off mode is pretty fast for both Windows and most Linux desktops. Speaking of which, it's still a TV and thus does not automatically power off or go into power saving mode when the input signal is lost like the monitors do. This is not a big deal if you keep the remote nearby, but rather just something to remember. On a positive note though, I thought that after using the screen for a few weeks that I'd get terrible eye strain due to the sheer size of the display. I am glad to report that it's quite opposite in fact. With decent light control in the room and having used the panel for more than 8 hour working days rather frequently, I must say that the eye strain I do get from it is pretty much exactly the same as I did with the Asus XG35VQ ultrawide monitor. If that's a real concern for you, then based on my short experience with the panel, I would say that you shouldn't really be worried about it. But do keep in mind that I've only had the TV for a month now and every single person perceives eye strain and similar effects differently. Speaking of the sheer size of this TV as a monitor, all sorts of adventure games and RPGs are an absolute blast to experience on an OLED. The regular 16x9 4K resolution works great for slower paced games and when you find a game where you can force a 21x9 resolution, it is simply amazing. 
You might be put off by the black bars initially until you give it a few minutes and get used to them, which is only made possible by having the individual pixels completely turned off, hence providing black bars which do not start to annoy you with their usual greyish colors that you get on LCD displays. The effect that you get when doing this also in a pitch black room is amazing. The TV simply disappears and changes into a big ultra wide display. So for anyone thinking of getting or already owning a C1, this is something that you should test out at least once to see if that's something that you'd also like. Strategy games, however, are an interesting bunch. For games which support zooming out to greater distances and having scalable UI elements, using this TV as a monitor is a great experience. Don't expect to do any real hardcore ranked play on it, but it's definitely immersive. The recently released Age of Empires 1 and 2 Definitive Editions are a great example of how good it can be for strategy games. On the other end of the spectrum though, when you can't really zoom out the viewport enough, like it is with games like Don't Starve or Starcraft 2, then it's pretty bad and the emotions I have range from it's doable for Don't Starve to outright unplayable for Starcraft 2. When you are committed to playing these games on a C1 though, what you can do is to lower the resolution a bit and have the image scaling set as centered instead of filling up the whole screen with the preserve aspect ratio option. That way you would have black borders around the game, but at least it would be playable. Same thing really goes for MOBAs such as Dota 2, which is way more zoomed in than what I would like it to be. With Dota 2 specifically though, even with smaller 16x9 displays, I have felt like the camera is just too zoomed in and I really don't like not having a good overview of the playfield. So this is pretty much it. It has been my summary of having used this 48 inch LG C1 for a month now. Based on my custom hour counter, I have clocked in around 315 hours of panel usage and there have been no issues with the burn-in or temporary image retention so far. In case you are interested in why I'm using a custom Python script for measuring the panel usage, then I'll leave the link to the full video in the description below and put a card somewhere up on the screen. But the overall experience has generally been as good as I expected it being when I started this journey. But as said, I'm still disappointed by the fact that I cannot use Linux on the desktop rig and enjoy the TV's full capabilities. Nevertheless, I shall keep looking for solutions and maybe one day the year of the Linux desktop could happen once more. Har har har. But if you have any questions regarding the TV or the use case of using it as a PC monitor, pop a question down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, the Raised Gamma video is still planned and should be coming up real soon, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. But until next time, I thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Whenever, wherever you are. Bye bye.